Welcome back. In this particular video, we are again talking about the solution of chapter number 5 that is understanding data of IP grade 11 and all the questions are taken from the NCRT textbook and this is part number 2 for this particular chapter solution. Namaste students, this is Sanjay and welcome back to my YouTube channel Tech Tip Now. Chaliye sikhte hain aur sikhne ke saath saath samajhte bhi hain. But before that, I would like to request you that please subscribe my channel if you are visiting here first time and if you really like this video then please don't forget to like and share it as well. So let's move to the next question now. Now here it is saying that for the annual day celebration, the teacher is looking for an anchor in a class of 42 students. The teacher would make selection on an anchor on the basis of singing skills, writing skills as well as monitoring skills. So there are three different skills you can see. Now the question is which mode of data collection should be used. So we all know that basically there are two modes of data structures. One is structured and second is what unstructured. So here in this particular question definitely we will use structured data and the next question is that how would you represent the skills of students as data. Now you can see basically there are three skills singing, writing skills and monitoring skills. Now what exactly we have to do is to just take the name of students means because we are taking the help of structured data or we can say that we are going to collect data in a structured manner so definitely we will take the help of table or we can say that we will store our data or collect data in row and column format. So what we can do, we can put all these three skills in a different columns like uh, here you can see and now we can take the name of all the students one by one like this and we will definitely use numerical data to provide the marks of all these different skills like 4, then 6, like 9. So this is how I mean we will definitely represent different skills in a tabular format we can say. So the answer would be we can say the structured data for question number A and for B you can see because we are using this numerical data so we can say we will definitely represent our all the skills in form of numerical data. So this is how we can get the answer of this particular question. Let's move to the next question now. Now here it is saying that differentiate between structured and unstructured data giving one example. Now we all know that when we talk about the structured data it is always organized especially in the form of table. So we can say it is well organized and can be stored in defined format. And when we talk about unstructured data definitely it is always unorganized and do not have a fixed format means there is not any kind of fixed format like you can take the example of newspaper you see there every day we see the newspaper all it comes in a different manner so it is always unorganized and there is no fixed format and when we say the second difference obviously like I said in tabular format we manage data so we can say it can be stored in row and column structures and definitely in an unstructured data we never go for you know row and column structure although sometimes it can be presented but we cannot say that always it is there now the third one is saying that it is usually numeric and alphanumeric data. Yes of course when we uh, manage data in a structured manner or you can say tabular format we generally use you know either text or you can say the numbers that's why we are saying numeric and alphanumeric data and of course when we take the example of newspaper or any tweet handle or any email messages we always see there you know sometime we see informations in alphanumeric data or in alphanumeric form. Sometimes audios are there, videos are there and other formats can be also there. So these are the differences we can see between structured and unstructured data. As far as example is concerned, we can say railway reservation system, address book, banks, you know, bookshops, all these uses, you know, or manages their data in a structured manner and newspaper, emails, presentation softwares, I mean presentations basically or the document which you create in MS Word can be said you know on a structured data. So these are the differences we can get and the next question is the principal of a school wants to do following analysis on the basis of food items procured and sold in the canteen means in a canteen you know different food items are managed and their sales are also uh, being managed. So the question is that uh, you have to compare all these things but before that you have to create an appropriate data set for these three items fruit, biscuit and samosa and by listing their purchase price and sale prices of course and apply basic statistical techniques to make the comparisons. 
means we have to make a data set using all these three items including all their details like you know purchase price and sale price number of quantities uh, the quantity we sell and all that and according to that also we have to you know compare their prices like you can see in the question number one compare the purchase and sale prices so it is saying that you have to explain what could be the best statistical techniques now as far as its data set representation is concerned you can see here I have made two different tables because in a table we will just maintain the details of all the items and we will also take another data set where we will just maintain the orders uh, because if you try to maintain all these things together in a single table you have to repeat all these details like you know item name brand and all that repeatedly so uh, to avoid this what I am doing I am just keeping different data sets one for item and one for order now on the basis of items available in our canteen we will definitely sell them so you can see in item table we are maintaining item code name their brands because it is saying that we have to do some comparison using different companies for the same product so that's why I'm taking this brand unit I'm taking because sometimes say if you are selling you know juice so it always comes in milliliters or you can say sometimes bit biscuit and other products generally comes in grams and samosa we always take in pieces that's why we it is very important to tell us units then the purchase rate this P stands for purchase S rate is obviously sale rate and the quantity on hand we have is here and according to this table we are actually you know selling the items so this is order number order date then item code and if you want to get the details of item code so you just take the item code and you can get the reference from here and similarly uh, quantity we are selling this is actually sold quantity and or sell quantity and the rate which is again coming from the item table and then total like you know quantity into rate we are getting here right so these are some data I have taken just for the example now let's talk about the question number one that is compare the purchase and sale price of fruit juice and biscuits so what I do I just try to explain in a different sheet question is saying that you have to compare purchase and sale price so how can we do this you can see here I have taken you know another data set basis on this actually and here what I am doing I am just taking the product rate and I mean the, their purchase rate and the sale rate of the all different items or unique items and here what we are doing we are just finding the difference between sale rate and the product rate I mean sorry purchase rate so this is one two and all that and for this the statistical uh, method we will apply is definitely your range because range always says that you know find the difference between maximum and minimum so according to this fundamental actually I am trying to find the difference between these two so that I can say the best statistical analysis can be done in this particular example would be definitely range although we can use you know average and other methods also but for according to me the range function will be the better the next question is compare sales of fruit juice biscuit and samosa again the same tables are given so according to these two tables what I am doing here I am taking the help of this average method to find the overall average of individual products like you know in this particular table you can see in this order table uh, say for example when we see you know item code 1 so it has been sold for two times but I can see that here you know one quantity is missing so say for example if I take it to 8 so definitely when you find when you try to find the average between these two so it will be definitely 18 and 18 by 2 then we can say is definitely your 9 similarly for 2 or the second product because it hasn't been sold yet so I am taking it to 0 and similarly for others also I am you know finding the average quantity sales basis on this then I will try to find the max so that I can say the 6 uh, sorry the 9 is the highest value so I can say the samosa is the best selling product for our canteen so here what we are using is what your average for statistical analysis method method we can say so this is how we can get the answer of this particular question let's move to the next question now variation in sale price of fruit juices of different companies for same quantity in milliliter uh, it is actually talking about the analyze the variation in sale price so basis on this again example 
this is how I will try to make the data set first and as far as approach is concerned so definitely I'll take the help of standard deviation method here so what exactly we do in a standard deviation first of all we try to find the median of given uh, items we can see so say for example if these are 45 80 and 60 so if we try to calculate median value of these given numbers so it will be say this is my median so it will be definitely 61.6 and according to this then we try to find the difference between you know original rate minus the medium so it will be what I am doing here I am just differentiating and writing in quickly manner it will be definitely minus 16.6 then here it is 18.4 because I have already calculated it so I am taking it directly but you can just calculate them so this is minus 1.6 then you just find to sum of this uh, difference between the original sale rate and the median so it will be then 0 0.2 basis on this we can also try to find the square of the difference between the median and the sale price so it will be like uh, these are the values and when you find the overall summation of this so it will be so this is my uh, final summation of the square of the difference and what we do here then we try to divide this number with the total number of quantities so means there are total three different items so I'll divide it by three then we will get 205.86 and then finally we find the square root of the given number so it will be 14.33 so we can say the variation in sale price is by 14.33 so overall this is how I mean we can do the analysis so now I hope that you will be able to understand how we are doing the analysis and what kind of approaches we can apply in different kind of questions so that's it for this session now and we will meet in the next video with new solutions new chapters and new concepts till then keep practicing keep learning and thank you very much for watching this video